Hello, this is Asadic. Um, I actually just recorded an entire video about setting up this 787B for the very first time uh, and then did not realize that XSplit, uh, which is the app I'm using to record the video, uh, was always putting the Assetto Corsa app on top of everything else in my Windows environment. So I was doing a bunch of explaining about data in here and you guys would never have seen any of it because it was always showing the car at the drag strip. So I'm going to do a, uh, I guess, a quickie version now uh, and just sort of explain all these main points. Um, so we have the INI loaded up. And um, for this procedure to work, you have to have the, um, well, for uh, the auto learn at the drag strip, you have to have learning mode turned on. And I think you have to have it turned on just for all the various things that you end up doing that are special at a drag strip. So you want to make sure that's on. And I'm going to run AC in windowed mode, even though it doesn't actually help. Whatever. Um, we're going to run these at the drag strip, 2,000 meters. Um, and then here's our new entry. And I'm going to show you what I would do, even though what I'm doing isn't necessarily for the first time. This is not the first time I actually all, I did all this already, but I'm going to pretend like it's the first time and then explain to you what would have happened if it had actually been the first time. I know. Technologies. So, when I load the car for the first time, um, it normally would have, it would just kind of create that 787B entry in the INI when it didn't exist already. Um, and then I'm going to rev the engine for maybe like 10 seconds. Just trying to find the max RPM value that you could possibly get out of this engine. And that's probably good. And then I'm going to shift up through the, uh, the gears and see where my max gear is. This max gear is 5, uh, which the default in the app for the shift light is 6. So um, at this point, you would have to exit the drag strip. Um, and go back to the INI and you have to set this data this max gear to 5 manually because it would default to 6 which of course it would never get to 6 so you, you gotta set it to 5 just so it knows what the max gear is for the car before you start running through the uh, the learning procedure okay so um, this is all fine I suppose and then um, if you look in a set of Corsa, there's this graph here, and this is the the torque and the horsepower. And so, generally speaking, you want to shift near peak horsepower or right after it to try to maximize um, power to the wheels. Uh, in this instance, like this is the 8,000 mark, and then it goes up to maybe 8,400 or something. I, we know from looking in the I and I from the max gear, max RPM, uh, it goes to 9138. So that's that's red line for real. Um, this graph only goes up to 84, and then it, it looks like it's still going up when it gets to to this line here. So it's almost like this graph isn't complete. Like they're missing um, 600 RPMs worth of data. You know, does it fall off right after that, or does it does it kind of hold steady, or I don't know. But um, if we look at our shift points here, the shift points are all sort of indicating. Like uh, first gear, I sort of set that low because of wheel spin and first gear, just so much torque. It's like spinning it out. You could probably even drop this like another couple hundred RPM uh, and be okay. Um, and I'll run it down the drag strip once or twice, and then hopefully we'll see some examples. Uh, and these other values, th I've already gone through this learning process where I sort of defaulted it upwards somewhere around 8,900, and then they all kind of started coming in closer to the 8,400, and so I was kind of just manually setting them there, uh, and then ran through some, uh, you know, some runs down the drag strip, and then it, it wiggles these values around. Uh, when you do the learning mode, it just randomizes an amount of RPM away from 
whatever value's already been set. And then it tries to determine if that's a better shift point based on how long it takes you to get from the middle of one gear to the middle of the next gear in terms of the um, KPH, KMH. It's a little bit complicated. I don't want to get too deep into that, but hopefully it's valid scientifically. I'm waiting for somebody to tell me I'm wrong, and then I'll have to find some new way to, to do this. All right, so after all that, um, we're going to do some runs down the drag strip and sort of see how this process works. And then I'm going to... Um, I've already set my max RPM and my max gear, so we're good there. Uh, I'm going to just sort of sneak my way up to the start line. And then once I cross the start line, this purple will turn to gray, and that means I'm good to go. I usually go about 10 kmh. And now we're going to start making some runs down the drag strip. And just wait for the shift. Ah, I pulled that early. Hopefully it won't matter. And you gotta run it all the way out. And then when it doesn't uh, find any new shift points, which it's not going to the first time down the drag strip, uh, it turns purple. And that's how you know that the randomizing didn't find anything. Sorry, 10 kph. And try to wait for the red. In a race, it's probably not going to matter as much if you pull it early, but here for learning mode, it's, it's better to try to be right with the, uh, the shift light in order for the magic to work in the background. So here, it turned gray. That means it thinks it found a better shift point for at least one gear. And we're just going to keep doing this until we get to the end of the drag strip and it's purple. I pulled second gear a little bit early, but there was a flash of red, so hopefully it wasn't that early. it found something. And the the time it takes to get down the drag strip, it doesn't actually matter. Um, this is all based on uh, the distance to get from the middle of one kph or the middle kph of one gear to the middle kph of the next gear. Which it determines on our first trip down the drag strip. thinks I found something. I'm going to keep going until hopefully it doesn't find anything. And this is going to take a uh, random amount of time. There's no real way to know how long this is going to take. Got to run it out. And, I mean, this is a bit of a tedious process, so it's not something you're going to do with every car. I mean, it's definitely not something that I could do with every car. Um, but the cars that you really like and the cars that you want to try to be as fast as possible, um, this is probably a good thing to do with those cars. So.
that shift point for the first gear could probably be a little bit lower. Just skip some of that spin out. But it's so rare you'd be in first gear probably that it might not matter. Oops, what I hit? A oh, replay? <laughs> That's not what I wanted. Trying to get about 10 kmh at this start line. It's a little bit slow to shift by modern standards, I think. And you gotta run this all the way to the end, every time. Otherwise you don't know if you found any better shift points. Okay, so here we got purple, which means on that run down the drag strip, it didn't find any better shift points. So, I mean, you could continue running it, you know, maybe try to get purple like two in a row, um, because it is random. It's, you know, it's just, it's trying to you know, hunt and peck around these shift points to see if, you know, maybe it's faster. And so it's probably good to like let it fail one or two times in a row. Uh, and then you feel pretty good that the data in the I and I is is much closer to optimum shifts than you know whatever value might be happening by default and whatever app you're using. So I'm gonna exit this and we'll look at this again. So here we got so that year one shift point came down some, and the app itself might even be responding to you know, less wheel spin, being faster, you know, because uh, you're, if you're spinning your wheels, you're not actually applying traction to the ground. Um, but the rest of these are in the 86, 88 range, so that's, that's pretty good. And that's actually, I'd say that's right in line with, you know, that 8650 is kind of what the sort of Corsa app is suggesting. So in that regard, you know, for gears two and three, it, it makes sense. Uh, for gear four, uh, the randomizing actually got us a little bit higher in uh, you know in the rpms up to like the 8821 it'd be interesting to see you know if you did run this procedure another uh you know 20 times like what would happen to these values I mean, they would continue to hopefully like slowly migrate their way to more perfect um and it you know it could be dependent on whatever gear ratios you have set up in your gearbox um, so if you went and changed, you know, your third gear, fourth gear, you know, gears for a certain track or whatever, you might have to kind of come back and rerun this process at the drag strip again with that specific gearing to, uh, to again, try to find like the more perfect shift points. And, um, you know, perfect shift points are, I mean, it's not going to find you seconds, you know, but it might find you some tenths or some hundredths. Um, and in some races, that's enough. So... That is the medium length version of how this all works. Um, we ran the auto learning process. You know, we, we sort of exited the drag strip a couple times. We looked at the max gear and the max RPM values and how those get set. Um, and all these values you could set manually if you wanted. Like if you just decided for whatever reason um, you want it to be a certain RPM, like like for first gear, you know, you know you want to try to avoid wheel spin, so you want to try to set that value low enough so you're not getting it. Even if maybe the auto learning 
procedure didn't find that value for you, which in this case it seems like maybe it did. It's trying, you know, it's responding to that that wheel spin as being a negative. Um, or let's say, you know, like you didn't ever want to shift into fifth. Well, you could set this value to, you know, 9300, and then that would it would never tell you to shift into fifth gear. Um, if you were if you had a car where you know the the very top gear was actually like an overdrive gear or something where you know it's just for fuel efficiency and in the you know the road going car but it's not faster so there's instances where you, you would want to maybe adjust this manually um, so anyway that's that hopefully this um, illuminated some of uh, how to set up a uh, car the first time in a set of Corsa and then uh, for the Exotic Shift Light app and then to go through the learning mode process. So if you have any questions, post them on the Race Department forum uh, or on the YouTube um, comments and hopefully I will get a chance to answer them um, to the best of my abilities. And thank you for trying the app, watching the video. Um, hopefully you like it. Feel free to give me feedback. I'm always happy to hear it. And uh, I will see you racing.